I just bought my first crash supercar. A12 super fast. I just bought Michael B. Jordan's crash Ferrari. Now the story goes December 2nd, 2023 at 11.30 p.m. 812 super fast next to a Ferrari 458 kind of sort of out of nowhere lost the back end and hit a Kia. A night out in Hollywood ends in a crash when Creed actor Michael B. Jordan wrecks his $400,000 Ferrari on Sunset Boulevard. And the wheel fell off. No, no, I'm serious. The wheel actually fell off. One of the tires flew off. You can actually see the wheel disengage from the car and it continues to roll down Sunset Boulevard. You can't make this stuff up. I think before we continue, a quick moment of silence for the Kia. All right, we're good. Now, maybe the craziest part about this whole A12 saga, my good buddy Gordon, AKA F-Spot, he was at the crash scene. So when this car popped up on eBay Motors with a buy it now for $198,000, I knew I had one thing to do. They were asking $198,000, I offered $180,000, they counted at $190,000, I counted at $185,000, they said $188,000, and we agreed at $187,000. I bought a trailer, we're headed to California. The A12 is off in Sacramento, California. It's about 10 hours and 700 miles. And this trailer's on airbags. You can actually drop it all the way to the ground. Now 700 miles across the Great Basin of Northern Nevada through Reno, the littlest biggest city in the world. And welcome to Sacramento, California. This place is actually crazy. There are auto recyclers everywhere, dismantlers, salvage cars. What did I get myself into? I'm not this guy. I've never been this guy. I don't even know if I want to be this guy. 12 hours later, welcome to Sacramento. We're going to go see the 812 for the first time. I bought this car in eBay Motors, sight unseen. I just hope the photos match the actual car. And here she is tucked away in the back of some warehouse covered in dust. Honestly though, she's not in as bad a shape as I was expecting. The real question is, will she fire up? <laughs> the color on this car is absolutely gorgeous. Ferrari Azuro California. Oh my, oh my, yep. Now this trailer is an absolute game changer. I'm having a conversation with the guy from the salvage yard, a very nice gentleman, but at the same time, I have no idea what I'm doing. The windshield is broken, the passenger window is completely gone. We gotta wrap this up in plastic, make sure no rain or snow gets inside the cabin. Shout out to the guys at the salvage yard because obviously I came completely unprepared. Now, kind of sort of fun fact, I have never in the entire history of my life towed a vehicle by myself, and the first time is, well, the best time. The saving grace, it already has a salvage title, so if anything does go wrong, I guess it's not really a big deal. Well, I am hot and sweaty, I'm dusty, and I'm questioning my intelligence right now because as I pull my salvage title for our A12 super fast, I daydream of the clean title A12 I just sold. Yes, you heard that correct. I sold a clean title for our A12 super fast in exchange for a salvage title 812 super fast. I have completely lost my mind. I also got a load of Samira, the sales tax netted to zero. So effectively, if I can fix this 812, I get a free Lotus Amira. I don't know if that math is mathin', but we're gonna count it. As far as the damage on the A12, the driver's side is actually 100% perfect. All the cars passing me on the left side, they see the car and they're like, that's a clean title. As far as the damage on the A12, obviously it's fairly apparent. Most of the damage is right here. We need a new bumper, we need a front fender. The hood, I don't actually know. We need a front windshield, we need a new side mirror. The door can definitely be salvaged, can be repaired. As far as in here, I don't really know. Welcome here to Nevada, welcome to Reno. We got seven and a half hours that way. Should be smooth as butter. Now doing this trip solo is terrifying right now. I've never towed a car alone. I have no experience tying down cars. We're in Northern Nevada, in the middle of nowhere. The Ram TRX can tow. Towing capacity is 8,100 pounds. The trailer and the super fast is about 6,500 pounds. So we're within capacity, but the TRX is not really an ideal tow rig. She's squatted down, but she's doing great. There's nothing better than being self-reliant. I'm learning to tow one mile at a time. We have made it back to home sweet home. Three days, 24 hours of driving. 1400 miles with not one single issue, we've made it. I'm just as shocked as you guys that we actually made it in one piece. Now if you tow for a living, I have a newfound respect for what you do. That is so much more exhausting than just driving a normal vehicle. So we gotta unload the A12, get her in the garage, and I guess see what's wrong. This trailer is so slick. It is on airbags. We're just gonna drop it to the ground. 
And being able to hook up the ratchet strap to this rail system right here is an absolute game changer. When I left Sacramento, you have no idea how nervous I was. Latching up these ratchet straps, my confidence level was very, very, very low, but now I feel like, I feel like a professional. And definitely the most fun part of the entire process uh, did not go as planned. Luckily the front bumper doesn't really matter because it, well, yeah, I mean, it goes without saying, but still regardless, hmm. I've been waiting 12 hours for this, and I thought it was gonna be a lot more satisfying. Are you kidding me? There's really only one way to get in the A12, and it goes kind of sort of like this. Easy, smooth as butter, baby. Oh gosh, ow. We're good. I'm just getting a little bit too old for these shenanigans. This red interior, though, is beautiful. Okay, so we got no airbag, shouldn't be a problem. And... The spec on this car is out of control. You got the Italian flag right there. I've never seen that on any other A12. Full carbon fiber. You have the red pinstriping here on the steering wheel. Also carbon fiber, more carbon fiber. I mean the spec, Michael B. Jordan. Well played. I can't really see anything, so you gotta check my six. As long as I go straight back, it should be totally fine. If I hit the other side, it doesn't really matter, so. Lift is up, lift operates. I hear something slightly disconcerting. Not that this is a big surprise, but if you listen super close right here, clearly we have a vacuum leak of some kind. We should shut her down. Well, the fun and games is officially over. Now we gotta figure out how to actually sort this out. When F-Spot first saw this car, he actually sent me a message on WhatsApp, and I knew then and there, I had to own it. I would scour Copart looking for the Michael B. Jordan 812 Superfast. And eventually, sure enough, it popped up on Copart. But just like so many cars on Copart, all dreams were dashed. I was ineligible to bid. I'm not a dealer, I'm not a broker. The car got sold and as far as I was concerned, I was never gonna own it. And of course, two months later, the car showed up on eBay and I bought it. But you'll notice the car has the wheel attached. It's been reattached. You look at the Copart advert, the wheel is unattached. It is detached from the car. So the shop that bought the car off of Copart reattached the wheel, cleaned up the car a little bit, and resold it. Why did the shop resell it? What did they discover after they bought it that made them realize they didn't want to fix it? and I'm the sucker who bought it. When I bought the car, I considered all of these things. I should have flown to Sacramento. I should have done a full inspection of the car, but it's a Michael B. Jordan 812. We're gonna fix it. I don't know how we're gonna fix it. We're gonna get her fixed. This is the actual wheel that was detached from the car. This is the one that rolled down Sunset Boulevard, and you can see the lip of the wheel is somewhat damaged. They repaired the wheel, had it powder coated, but it's powder coated the wrong color. The lighting here in the garage is not the best, but you'll notice that wheel just has like a little bit more rose gold than that one. As far as the overall damage of the car, I've had limited time to actually fully assess it. That full evaluation will come once I get the car up in the air, but right off the bat, the passenger mirror needs to be replaced, three airbags deployed, the driver airbag, the passenger airbag, as well as the passenger side airbag, the windshield needs to be replaced, the passenger glass needs to be replaced, the front bumper needs to be replaced, front fender obviously is completely missing, the passenger headlight has a slight fracture in it. Unfortunately, the subframe, there's a lot of issues. The bracket for the hood mechanism needs to be replaced. The passenger door, the damage is actually a lot worse than I expected. All four wheels need to be replaced. And I haven't even lifted up the car in the air. That's really gonna tell the full story. Now I paid $187,000 for this car. If this car was a clean title, no accident history, in this specification, because this car is a very high MSRP, it's probably a $400,000 car. So I got it for 50% off. Now the motor seems good. The whole driver's side of the car is perfect. The back of the car is good. The interior is good as well. So let's say the shop in Sacramento did find something after they bought the car on Copart that meant they didn't actually wanna fix it. Even if I had to part out the car, I think financially, I could recoup most of my money. That's not the plan, but worst case scenario, you always gotta calculate that. I think we'll be okay. I think we can get the car fixed. Might need a little bit of tender love and care. We got a lot of work to do. Now, I don't wanna get caught up too much in the details of this accident, but I do own the car, so I kinda wanna know. I'm gonna do a little bit of digging. Historical weather, zip code 90210, Beverly Hills, California, December 2nd, 2023. At 11.53 p.m., it was reported at 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the accident was reported at approximately 11.30 p.m., so it's safe to assume 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's cold for Los Angeles, but it's not that cold. Would 52 degrees Fahrenheit affect tire performance? 
it's not that cold. Now she's front engine, 800 horsepower, rear wheel drive. Now I'm just guessing. I could be completely wrong. This is just a theory, a hypothesis, but I'm betting when this car crashed in that Kia, it was probably in race mode. Maybe traction control was turned off, maybe stability control was turned off, but even just in race mode, cold tires, you mash the throttle, you are going straight into that Kia. It don't matter who you are. And because you can enable the different driving modes so easy on the steering wheel, I'm guessing the owner of this car probably lent it out to a lot of his buddies. Whoever was driving in this car, they might not even have known what mode they were in. The red 458 came up next to them, they got caught up in the moment, bada bing, bada boom. The A12 super fast, coming from a guy who owned one, put a lot of miles on it, on cold tires, in the winter here in Utah. It's a very, very, very fine line and you don't want to cross it. Well, there you have it. We are the proud owners of the Michael B. Jordan Ferrari 812 Superfast. It's going to be the longest, hardest project we've ever done. Day one of many days. Today's video is over.